book one two the battle of marathon by elizabeth barrett browning this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com the battle of marathon by elizabeth barrett browning book one the war of greece with persia's haughty king no vulgar strain eternal goddess sing what dreary ghosts to glutted pluto fled what nations suffered and what heroes bled sing asia's powerful prince who envious saw the fame of athens and her might in war and scorns her power at cytheria's call her ruin plans and meditates her fall how athens blinded to the approaching chains by vulcan's artful spouse unmoved remains deceived by venus thus unconquered greece forgot her glories in the lap of peace while asia's realms and asia's lord prepare to ensnare her freedom by the wiles of war the piaust exult upon the athenian throne where once pisistratus his father shone for yet her son aeneas wrongs in part revenge and grief to cytherea's art and still from smoking troy's once sacred wall does priam's reeking shade for vengeance call minerva saw and Paphia's queen defied a boon she begged nor jove the boon denied that greece should rise triumphant o'er her foe disarm the invaders and their power overthrow her prayer obtained the blue-eyed goddess flies as the fierce eagle through the radiant skies to aristides then she stood confessed shows persia's arts and fires his warlike breast then pours celestial ardour over his frame and points the way to glory and to fame or struck the chief and swells his troubled soul in pride and wonder thoughts progressive roll he inly groaned and spoke his labouring breast at once by paulus and by care oppressed inspired he moved earth echoed where he trod all full of heaven all burning with the god the athenians viewed with awe the mighty man to whom the chief impassioned thus began hear all ye sons of greece friends fathers hear the gods command it and the gods revere no madness mine for mark o favoured greeks that by my mouth the martial goddess speaks this no athenians that proud persia now prepares to twine thy laurels on her brow behold her princely chiefs their weapons wield by venus fired and shake the brazen shield i hear their shouts that echo to the skies i see their lances blaze their banners rise i hear the clash of arms the battles roar and all the din and thunder of the war i know that greeks shall purchase just renown and fame impartial shall athena crown then greeks prepare your arms award the yoke thus jove commands sublime the hero spoke the greeks assent with shouts and rend the skies with martial clamour and t-
tumultuous cries so struggling winds with rage indignant sweep the azure waters of the silent deep sudden the seas rebellowing frightful rise and dash their foaming surges to the skies burst the firm sand and boil with dreadful roar lift their black waves and combat with the shore so each brave greek in thought aspires to fame stung by his words and dread of future shame glory's own fires within their bosom rise and shouts tumultuous thunder to the skies but love's celestial queen resentful saw the greeks by paulus warned prepare for war the indignant goddess of the paphian bower deceives themistocles with heavenly power the hero rising spoke o rashly blind what sudden fury thus has seized thy mind boy as thou art such empty dreams beware shall we for griefs and wars unsought prepare the will of mighty jove whatever it be obey and own the omnipotent decree if our disgrace and fall the fates employ why did we triumph over perfidious troy why say o chief in that eventful hour did grecian heroes crush dardanian power him eyeing sternly thus the greek replies renowned for truth and as minerva wise o son of greece no heedless boy am i despised in battle's toils nor first to fly nor dreams or frenzy call my words astray the heaven-sent mandate pious i obey if paulus did not all my words inspire may heaven pursue me with unceasing ire but if o oh, grant my prayer almighty jove i bear a mandate from the courts above then through yon heaven let awful thunder roar till greeks believe my mission and adore he ceased and through the host one murmur ran with eyes transfixed upon the godlike man but hark over earth expands the solemn sound it lengthening grows heaven's azure vaults resound while peals of thunder beat the echoing ground prostrate convinced divine themistocles embraced the hero's hands and clasped his knees behold me here the awestruck chieftain cries while tears repentant glisten in his eyes behold me here thy friendship to entreat themistocles a suppliant at thy feet before no haughty despot's royal throne this knee has bent it bends to thee alone thy mission to adore thy truth to own behold me jove and witness what i swear by all on earth i love by all in heaven i fear some fiend inspired my words of dark design some fiend concealed beneath a robe divine then aid me in my prayer ye gods above bid aristides give me back his love he spake and wept benign the godlike man felt tears descend and paused then thus began thrice worthy greek for this shall we contend ah no i feel thy worth thou more than friend pardon sincere themistocles receive the heart declares tis easy to forgive he spake divine his eye with paulus burns he spoke and sighed 
and sighed and wept by turns demosthocles beheld the chief oppressed awe-struck he paused then rushed upon his breast whom sage miltiades with joy addressed hero of greece worthy a hero's name adored by athens favourite child of fame glory's own spirit does with truth combine to form a soul so godlike so divine o aristides rise our chief to save the fame the might of athens from the grave nor then refuse thy noble arm to lend to guard athena and her state defend first i obedient customed homage pay to own a hero's and a leader's sway he said and would have knelt the man divine perceived his will and stayed the sire's design not mine o sage to lead this gallant band he generous said and grasped his aged hand proud as i am in glory's arms to rise athenian greeks to shield your liberties yet tis not mine to lead your powerful state enough it is to tempt you to be great be it for miltiades experienced sage to curb your ardour and restrain your rage your souls to temper by his skill prepare to succour athens and conduct the war more fits my early youth to purchase fame by deeds in arms to immortalize my name firmly he spake his words the greek inspire and all were hushed to listen and admire the sage thus most allied to gods the fame the pride the glory of the grecian name even by thee chief i swear to whom is given the sacred mandate of yon marble heaven to lead not undeserving of thy love to avert the yoke if so determines jove amidst the host imagination rose and paints the combat but disdains the woes and heaven-born fancy with dishevelled hair points to the ensanguined field and victory there but soon too soon these empty dreams are driven forth from their breasts but soothing hope is given hope sprung from jove man's soul and envied heaven then all his glory aristides felt and begged the chieftain's blessing as he knelt miltiades his pious arms outspread called jove's high spirit on the hero's head nor called unheard sublime in upper air the bird of jove appeared to bless his prayer lightning he breathed not harsh not fiercely bright but one pure stream of heaven collected light jove's sacred smile lulls every care to rest calms every woe and gladdens every breast but what shrill blast thus bursts upon the ear what banners rise what heralds forms appear that haughty mien and that commanding face bespeak them persians and of noble race one on whose hand darius signet beamed superior to the rest a leader seemed with brow contracted and with flashing eye thus threatening spoke in scornful majesty no greeks that i a sacred herald bring the awful mandate of the persian king to force allegiance from the sons of greece then earth and water give nor scorn his peace or if for homage back reproof i bear to meet his wrath his vengeful wrath prepare for not in vain ye scorn his dread command when asia's might comes thundering in his hand to whom miltiades 
with kindling eye we scorn darius and his threats defy and now proud herald shall we stoop to shame shall athens tremble at a tyrant's name persian away such idle dreams forbear and shun our anger and our vengeance fear o vain thy words the herald fierce began thrice vain thy dotaged words o powerless man sons of a desert hoping to withstand all the joint forces of darius hand fools fools the king of millions to defy for freedom's empty name to ask to die yet stay till persia's powers their banners rear then shall ye learn our forces to revere and ye o impotent shall dine to fear to whom great aristides rising ire boiled in his breast and set his soul on fire o wretch accursed the hero cried to seek to insult experienced age to insult a greek inglorious slave whom truth and heaven deny unfit to live yet more unfit to die but trained to pass the goblet at the board and servile kiss the footsteps of thy lord whose wretched life no glorious deeds beguile who lives upon the semblance of a smile die thy base shade to gloomy regions fled join there the shivering phantoms of the dead base slave return to dust his victim then in fearful accents cried o best of men most loved of gods most merciful most just behold me humbled grovelling in the dust not mine the offence the mandate stern i bring from great darius asia's tyrant king o strike not chief not mine the guilt not mine ah over those brows severe let mercy shine so dear to heaven of origin divine tributes lands gold shall wealthy persia give all and yet more but bid me wretched live he trembling thus persuades with fond entreat and nearer pressed and clasped the hero's feet forth from the grecian's breast all rage is driven he lifts his arms his eyes his soul to heaven hear jove omnipotent all wise all great to whom all fate is known whose will is fate hear thou all-seeing one hear sire divine teach me thy will and be thy wisdom mine behold this suppliant life or death decree be thine the judgment for i bend to thee and thus the sire of gods and men replies while pealing thunder shakes the groaning skies the awful voice through spheres unknown was driven resounding through the darkening realms of heaven aloft in air sublime the echo rode and earth resounds the glory of the god son of athena let the coward die and his pale ghost to pluto's empire fly son of athena our command obey know thou our might and then adore our sway the almighty spake the heavens convulsive start from the black clouds the whizzing lightnings dart and dreadful dance along the troubled sky struggling with fate in awful mystery the hero heard and jove his breast inspired nor now by pity touched but anger fired while his big heart within his bosom burns off from his feet the clinging slave he spurns vain were his cries his prayers against fate above jove wills his fall and who can strive with jove to whom the hero hence to pluto's sway to realms of night never lit by cynthia's ray hence from yon gulf the earth and water bring and crown with victory your mighty king he said and where the gulf of death appeared where raging waves with rocks sublimely reared he hurled the wretch at once of hope bereaved struggling he fell the roaring flood received 
even now for life his shrieks his groans implore and now death's latent agony is o'er he struggling sinks and sinks to rise no more the train amazed behold their herald die and greece in arms they tremble and they fly so some fair herd upon the verdant mead see by the lion's jaws their foremost bleed fearful they fly lest what revolving fate had doomed their leader should themselves await then shouts of glorious war and fame resound athena's brazen gates receive the lofty sound but she whom paphia's radiant climes adore from her own bower the work of paulus saw tumultuous thoughts within her bosom rise she calls her car and at her will it flies the eternal car with gold celestial burns its polished wheel on brazen axle turns this to his spouse by vulcan's self was given an offering worthy of the forge of heaven the goddess mounts the seat and seized the reins the dove's celestial cut the ethereal plains before the sacred birds and car of gold self-moved the radiant gates of heaven unfold she then dismounts and thus to mighty jove begins the mother and the queen of love and is it thus o sire that fraud should spring from the pure breast of heaven's eternal king was it for this saturnius word was given that greece should fall among nations cursed of heaven thou swore by hell's black flood and heaven above is this o oh say is this the faith of jove behold stern paulus athens sons alarms darius herald crushed the greece in arms even now behold her crested streamers fly each greek resolved to triumph or to die ah me unhappy when shall sorrow cease too well i know the fatal might of greece was it not enough imperial troy should fall that argive hands should raise the god-built wall was it not enough anchises son should roam far from his native shore and much-loved home all this unconscious of thy fraud i bore for thou o sire to allay my vengeance swore that athens towering in her might should fall and rome should triumph on her prostrate wall but oh if haughty greece should captive bring the great darius persia's mighty king what power her pride what power her might shall move not even the thunderer not eternal jove even to thy heaven shall rise the towering fame and prostrate nations will adore her name rather on me thy instant vengeance take then all should fall for cytherea's sake o oh, hurl me flaming in the burning lake transfix me there unknown to olympian calm launch thy red bolt and bear thy crimson arm i'd suffer all more bid my woes increase to hear but one sad groan from haughty greece she thus her grief with fruitless rage expressed and pride and anger swelled within her breast but he whose thunders o'er the troubled sky thus mournful spake and curbed the rising sigh and it is thus celestial pleasures flow even here shall sorrow reach and mortal woe shall strife the heavenly powers for ever move and even insult the sacred ear of jove no o rebellious greece shall rise sublime in fame the first nor daughter mine the crime in valour foremost and in virtue great fame's highest glories shall attend her state so fate ordains nor all my boasted power can raise those virtues or those glories lower but rest secure destroying time must come 
and athens self must own imperial rome then the great thunderer and with visage mild shook his ambrosial curls before his child and bending awful gave the eternal nod heaven quaked and fate adored the parent god joy seized the goddess of the smiles and loves nor longer care her heavenly bosom moves hope rose and over her soul its powers displayed nor checked by sorrow nor by grief dismayed she thus o thou whose awful thunders roll through heaven's ethereal vaults and shake the pole eternal sire so wonderfully great to whom is known the secret age of fate say shall great persia next to rome most dear to venus breast shall persia learn to fear say shall her fame and princely glories cease shall persia servile own the sway of greece to whom the thunderer bent his brow divine and thus in accents heavenly and benign daughter not mine the secrets to relate the mysteries of all revolving fate but ease thy breast enough for thee to know what powerful fate decrees will jove bestow he then her griefs and anxious woes beguiled and in his sacred arms embraced his child doubt clouds the goddess breast she calls her car and lightly sweeps the liquid fields of air when sable night midst silent nature springs and over athena shakes her drowsy wings the paphian goddess from olympus flies and leaves the starry senate of the skies to athens heaven blessed towers the queen repairs to raise more sufferings and cause more cares the pillion sage she moved so loved by fame in face in wisdom and in voice the same twelve chiefs in sleep absorbed and grateful rest she first beheld and them she thus addressed immortal chiefs the fraudful goddess cries while all the hero kindled in her eyes for you these aged arms did i employ for you we raised the sacred walls of troy and now for you my shivering shade is driven from pluto's dreary realms by urgent heaven then o oh, be wise nor tempt the unequal fight in open fields but wait superior might within immortal athens sacred wall their strive their triumph nor their fear to fall to own the thunderer's sway then greeks prepare benign she said and melted into air end of book one recorded by nathan at antipodean writer dot wordpress dot com book two of the battle of marathon by elizabeth barrett browning this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com The Battle of Marathon by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Book 2 When from the briny deep the orient morn Exalts her purple light and beams unshorn And when the flaming orb of infant day glares over the earth and reillumes the sky the twelve deceived with souls on fire arose while the false vision fresh in memory glows the senate first they sought whose lofty wall midst athens rises and overshadows all the pride of greece it lifts its front sublime unbent amidst the ravages of time high on their towering seats the heroes found the chiefs of athens solemn ranged around one of the twelve the great clombrotus then renowned for piety and loved by men assembled heroes chiefs to pallas dear 
all great in battle and in virtue here when night with sable wings extended rose and wrapped our weary limbs in sweet repose i and my friends sidoon feigned in song fell on the valiant heracles the strong cleon and thermos cities in battle great by paulus loved and blessed by partial fate to us and other six while day toils steep our eyes in happy dreams and grateful sleep the pillion sage appeared but not as when on troy's last dust he stood the pride of men driven from the shore of acheron he came from lower realms to point the path to fame o glorious chiefs the sacred hero said for you and for your fame all troy has bled hither for you my shivering shade is driven from pluto's dreary realms by urgent heaven then o be wise nor tempt the unequal fight in open field but wait superior might within immortal athens sacred war their strive their triumph nor their fear to fall to own the thunderer's sway then greeks prepare benign he said and melted into air leave us not thus i cried o pillion sage experienced nestor famed for reverend age say first great hero shall the trump of fame our glory publish or disclose our shame o oh, what are athens fates in vain i said even as i spoke a shadowy chief had fled then here we flew to own the vision's sway and heaven's decrees to adore and to obey he thus and as before the blackened skies sound the hoarse breezes murmuring as they rise so through the assembled greeks one murmur rose one long dull echo lengthening as it goes then all was hushed in silence breathless awe oppressed each tongue and trembling they adore but now up rising from the astonished chiefs divine miltiades exposed his griefs for well the godlike warrior sage had seen frauds deceitful of the paphian queen and feared for greece for greece to whom is given eternal fame the purest gift of heaven and yet he feared the pious hero rose majestic in his sufferings in his woes grief clammed his tongue but soon his spirit woke words burst aloft and all the patriot spoke o athens athens all the snares i view thus shalt thou fall and fall inglorious too are all thy boasted dignities no more is all thy might and all thy glories all oh woe on woe unutterable grief not nestor's shade that cursed phantom chief but in that reverend air that lofty mien behold the frauds of love's revengeful queen not yet her thoughts does vengeance cease to employ her son aeneas wrongs and burning troy not yet forgotten lie within her breast nor soothed by time nor by despair depressed greeks still extolled by glory and by fame for yet o chiefs ye bear a grecian name if in these walls these sacred walls we wait the might of persia and the will of fate before superior force will athens fall and one overwhelming ruin bury all 
then in the open plain your might essay rush on to battle crush darius sway the frauds of venus warrior greeks beware disdain the persian foes nor stoop to fear this said clombrotus him indignant heard nor felt his wisdom nor his wrath he feared with rage the chief the godlike sage beheld and passion in his stubborn soul rebelled thrice impious man the infuriate chieftain cries flames black and fearful flashing from his eyes where lies your spirit greeks and can ye bow to this proud upstart of your power so low what does his aspect awe ye in his eye so full of haughtiness and majesty behold the impious soul that dares defy the power of gods and sovereign of the sky and can your hands no sacred weapon wield to crush the tyrant and your country shield on greeks your sons your homes your country free from such usurping chiefs and tyranny he said and grasped his weapon at his words beneath the horizon gleamed ten thousand swords ten thousand swords even in one instant raised sublime they danced aloft and midst the senate blazed nor wisdom checked nor gratitude repressed they rose and flashed before the sage's breast with pride undaunted greatness unsubdued gainst him in arms the impetuous greeks he viewed unarmed unawed before the infuriate bands nor begged for life nor stretched his suppliant hands he stood astounded riveted oppressed by grief unspeakable which swelled his breast life feeling being sense forgotten lie buried in one wide waste of misery can this be athens this the senate's pride he asked but gratitude was this denied though europe's homage at his feet were hurled athens forsakes him athens was his world unutterable woe by anguish stung all his full soul rushed heaving to his tongue and thoughts of power of fame of greatness or he cried athenians and he could no more awed by that voice of agony that word hushed were the greeks and sheathed the obedient sword they stood abashed to them the ancient chief began and thus relieved his swelling grief athenians warrior greeks my words revere strike me but listen bid me die but hear hear not clombrotus when he bids you wait at athens walls darius and your fate i feel that paulus self my soul inspires my mind she strengthens and my bosom fires strike greeks but hear me think not to this heart yon thirsty swords one breath of fear impart such slavish low-born thoughts to greeks unknown a persian feels and cherishes alone hear me athenians hear me and believe see greece mistaken even the gods deceive but fate yet wavers yet may wisdom move these threatening woes and thwart the queen of love obey my counsels and invoke for aid the cloud compelling god and blue-eyed maid i fear not for myself the silent tomb death lies in every shape and death must come but ah ye mock my truth traduce my fame ye blast my honour stigmatize my name ye call me tyrant when i wish thee free usurper when i live but greece for thee and thus the chief and boding silence drowned each clamorous tongue and sullen reigned around 
o chief great aristides first began mortal yet perfect godlike and yet man boast of ungrateful greece my prayer attend o be my chieftain guardian father friend and ye o greeks impetuous and abhorred again presumptuous lift the rebel sword again your weapons raise in hateful ire to crush the leader hero patriot sire not such was greece when greeks united stood to bathe perfidious troy in hostile blood not such were greeks inspired by glory then as gods they conquered now they are less than men degenerate race now lost to once loved fame traitors to greece and to the grecian name who now your honours who your praise will seek who now shall glory in the name of greek but since such discords your base souls divide procure the lots let jove and heaven decide to him clombrotus thus admiring cries thy thoughts how wondrous and thy words how wise so let it be avert the threatened woes and jove be present and the right disclose but give me sire of gods and powers above the heavenly vision and my truth to prove give me to avenge the breach of all thy laws to avenge myself then aid my righteous cause if this thou wilt i'll to thine altars lead twelve bulls which to thy sacred name shall bleed six snow-white heifers of a race divine prostrate shall fall and heap the groaning shrine nor this the most six rams that fearless stray untouched by man for thee this arm shall slay thus prayed the chief with shouts the heavens resound jove weighs the balance and the lots go round declare o muse for to thy piercing eyes the book of fate irrevocably lies what lots leapt forth on that eventful day who won who lost all-seeing goddess say first great clombrotus all his fortune tried and strove with fate but jove his prayer denied infuriate to the skies his arms are driven and raging thus upbraids the king of heaven is this the virtue of the blessed abodes and this the justice of the god of gods can he who hurls the bolt and shakes the sky the prayer of truth unblemished truth deny has he no faith by whom the clouds are riven who sits superior on the throne of heaven no wonder earth-born men are prone to fall in sin or listen to dishonour's call when gods the immortal gods transgress the laws of truth and sin against a righteous cause furious he said by anger's spirit fired then sullen from the senate walls retired tis now miltiades stern fate to dare but first he lifts his pious soul in prayer daughter of jove the mighty chief began without thy wisdom frail and weak is man a phantom greece adores o oh, show thy power and prove thy love in this eventful hour crown all thy glory all thy might declare the chieftain prayed and paulus heard his prayer swayed by the presence of the power divine the fated lot miltiades was thine that hour the swelling trump of partial fame diffused eternal 
glory on thy name daughter of jove he cries unconquered maid thy power i own and i confess thy aid for this twelve ewes upon thy shrine shall smoke of milk-white fleece the comeliest of their flock while hecatombs and generous sacrifice shall hewn and blacken half the astonished skies and thus the chief the shouting greeks admire while truth's bright spirit sets their souls on fire then thus themistocles ye grecian host not now the time for triumph or for boast now greeks for graver toils your minds prepare not for the strife but counsel of the war behold the sacred herald sent by greece to sparta's vales now hushed in leagues of peace her chiefs to aid the common cause to implore and bid darius shun the argive shore behold him here then let the leader greek command the bearer of our hopes to speak and thus the sage wherever the herald stands bid him come forth tis athens chief commands and bid him speak with freedom uncontrolled his thoughts deliver and his charge unfold he said and sate the greeks impatient wait the will of sparta and athena's fate silent they sate so ere the whirlwinds rise ere billows foam and thunder to the skies nature in death-like calm her breath suspends and hushed in silent or the approaching storm attends now midst the senate's walls the herald stands ye greeks he said and stretched his sacred hands assembled heroes ye athenian bands and thou beloved of jove our chief o sage renowned for wisdom as renowned for age and all ye chiefs in battle rank divine no joyful mission swayed by paulus mine the hardy spartans with one voice declare their will to aid our freedom and our war instant they armed by zeal and impulse driven but on the plains of the mysterious heaven comets and fires were writ an awful sign and dreadful omen of the wrath divine while threatened plagues upon their shores appear they curb their valour all subdued by fear the oracles declare the will above and of the sister and the wife of jove that not until the moon's bright course was o'er the spartan warriors should desert their shore threats following threats succeed the mandate dire plagues to themselves and to their harvest fire the spartan chiefs desist their march delay to wait the appointed hour and heaven obey grief smote my heart my hopes and mission vain their town i quitted for my native plain and when an eminence i gained in woe i gazed upon the verdant fields below where nature's ample reign extending wide displays her graces with commanding pride where cool eurotas winds her limpid floods through verdant valleys and through shady woods and crowned in majesty overtowering all in bright effulgence sparta's lofty wall to these i looked farewell and humbled bowed in chastened sorrow to the thundering god twas thus i mused when from a verdant grove that wafts delicious perfume from above the monster pan his form gigantic reared and dreadful to my awestruck sight appeared i hailed the god who reigns supreme below known by the horns that started from his brow up to the hips a goat but man's his face 
though grim and stranger to celestial grace within his hand a shepherd's crook he bore the gift of dian on the arcadian shore before the immortal power i fearing bowed congealed with dread and thus addressed the god comes hermes son as awful as his sire to vent upon the greeks immortal ire is it not enough the mandate stern i bring from sparta's chiefs and sparta's royal king that heaven enjoins them to refrain from fight till dian fills again her horns with light then vain their aid ere then may athens fall and persia's haughty chiefs invest her wall i said and sighed the god in accents mild my sorrow thus and rigid griefs beguiled not to destroy i come o chosen greek not athens fall but athens vain i seek then give again to honour and to fame my power despised and my forgotten name at sparta's doom no longer chief repine but learn submission to the will divine behold even now within this fated hour on marathonian plains the persian power even hippias self inspires the embattled host the athenians terror as the persians boast bid athens rise and glory's powers attest enough no more the fates conceal the rest he said his visage burned with heavenly light he spoke and speaking vanished from my sight and awed i sought where those loved walls invite but think not warrior greeks the fault is mine if athens fall it is by wrath divine i vainly vainly grieve the evil springs from him the god of gods the king of kings the herald said and bent his sacred head while cherished hope from every bosom fled each dauntless hero by despair depressed felt the deep sorrow swelling in his breast they mourn for athens friendless and alone cries followed cries and groan succeeded groan the athenian matrons startled at the sound rush from their looms and anxious crowd around they ask the cause the fatal cause is known by each fond sigh and each renewing groan while in their arms some infant love they bear at once for which they joy for which they fear hushed on its mother's breast the cherished child unconscious midst the scene of terror smiled on rush the matrons they despairing seek miltiades adored by every greek him found at length his counsels they entreat hang on his knees and clasp his sacred feet their babes before him on the ground they throw in all the maddening listlessness of woe first delapia of the matron's chief thus vents her bursting soul in frantic grief while her fond babe she holds aloft in air thus her roused breast prefers a mother's prayer o son of simon for the grecians raise to heaven thy fame thy honour and thy praise thus thus shall athens and her heroes fall shall thus one ruin seize and bury all say shall these babes be strangers then to fame and be but greeks in spirit and in name o thirst ye gods and hear a mother's prayer first let them glorious fall in ranks of war if asia triumph then shall hippias reign and athens freeborn sons be slaves again o son of simon let thy influence call the souls of greeks to triumph or to fall and guard their own their children's country's name from foul dishonour and eternal shame thus through her griefs the love of glory broke the mother wept but twas the patriot spoke and as before the greek 
she bowed with grace the lucid drops bedewed her lovely face their shrieks and frantic cries the matrons cease and death-like silence awes the sons of greece thrice did the mighty chief of athens seek to curb his feelings and essay to speak twas vain the ruthless sorrow wrung his breast his mind disheartened and his soul oppressed he thus while over his cheek the moisture stole retire ye matrons nor unman my soul though little strength this aged arm retains my swelling soul athena's foe disdains hushed be your griefs to heaven the victory cry assured will triumph all with freedom die and ye o chiefs when night disowns her sway and pensive dian yields her power to day to quit these towers for marathon prepare and brave darius in the ranks of war for yet may jove protect the grecian name and crown in unborn ages athens fame he said and glowing with the warlike fire and cheered by hope the godlike chiefs retire now cynthia rules the earth the flaming god in ocean sinks green neptune's old abode black erebus on drowsy pinions springs and over athena cowers his sable wings end of book two recorded by nathan at antipodean writer dot wordpress dot com Book three of The Battle of Marathon by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com. The Battle of Marathon by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Book three. When from the deep the hour's eternal sway impels the courses of the flaming day the long-haired greeks with brazen arms prepare their freedom to preserve and wage the war first aristides from the couch arose while his great mind with all minerva glows his mighty limbs his golden arms invest the cuirass blazes on his ample breast the glittering creases both his legs enfold and the huge shields on fire with burnished gold his hands to spears uphold of equal size and fame's bright glories kindle in his eyes upon his helmet plumes of horsehair nod and forth he moved majestic as a god upon his snorting steed the warrior sprung the courser neighed the brazen armour rung from heaven's ethereal heights the martial maid with conscious pride heroes might surveyed him as she eyed she shook the gorgon shield henceforth to me she cried let all the immortals yield let monster mars the latian regions own for attica minerva stands alone and now the unconquered chief of justice gains the senate's walls and there the steed detains whence he dismounts miltiades he seeks beloved of jove the leader of the greeks nor sought in vain there clad in armour bright the chieftain stood all eager for the fight within his aged hands two lances shine the helmet blazed upon his brows divine and as he bends beneath the unequal weight youth smiles again when with gigantic might his nervous limbs immortal arms could wield 
rush foe on foe and raging heap the field yet though such days were past and ruthless age transformed the warrior to the thoughtful sage though the remorseless hand of silent time impaired each joint and stiffened every limb yet through his breast the fire celestial stole throbbed in his veins and kindled in his soul in thought the lord of asia threats no more and hippias bites the dust mid seas of gore him as he viewed the youthful hero's breast heaved high with joy and thus the sage addressed chief best beloved of paulus he began in fame allied to gods o wondrous man behold apollo gilds the athenian wall our freedom waits and fame and glory call to battle asia's king and myriads dare swell the loud trump and swell the din of war he said impatient then the warrior sage began regardless of the fears of age not mine o youth with caution to control the fire and glory of thy eager soul so was i wont in brazen arms to shine such strength and such impatient fire were mine he said and bade the trumpets peals rebound high and more high the echoing war notes sound sudden one general shout the din replies a thousand lances blazing as they rise and athens banners wave and float along the skies so from the marsh the cranes embodied fly clap their glad wings and cut the liquid sky with thrilling cries they mount their joyful way vigorous they spring and hail the newborn day so rose the shouting greeks inspired by fame to assert their freedom and maintain their name first came themistocles in arms renowned whose steed impatient tore the trembling ground high over his helmet snowy plumes arise and shade that brow which persia's might defies a purple mantle graceful waves behind nor hides his arms but floats upon the wind his mighty form two crimson belts enfold rich in embroidery and stiff with gold callimachus the polymarch next came the theme of general praise and general fame cynagyrus who even the gods would dare heap ranks on ranks and thunder through the war his virtues godlike man's his strength surpassed in battle foremost and in flight the last his ponderous elms a shaggy lion's hide and the huge war axe clattered at his side the mighty chief a brazen chariot bore while fame and glory hail him and adore and tenor next his aid to athens gave like paris youthful and like hector brave cleon minerva's priest experienced sage advanced in wisdom as advanced in age a gregorus delinus favourite child the parents cares the glorious son beguiled 
but now he leaves his sire to seek his doom his country's freedom or a noble tomb and young aratus moved with youthful pride and heart elated at the hero's side next thou cleones thou triumphant moved by athens honoured by the greeks beloved and cephalinus the echoing pavements trod from youth devoted to the martial god honour unspotted crowned the hero's name unbounded virtue and unbounded fame such heroes shone the foremost of the host all athens glory and all athens boast behind a sable cloud of warriors rise with ponderous arms and shouting rend the skies these bands with joy miltiades inspire fame fills his breast and sets his soul on fire aloft he springs into the gold-wrought car while the shrill blast resounds to war to war the coursers plunge as conscious of their load and proudly name feel they bear a god the snow-white steeds by paulus self were given which sprung from the immortal breed of heaven the car was wrought of brass and burnished gold and diverse figures on its bulk were told of heroes who in plunging to the fight shrouded troy's glories in eternal night of fierce pelides who relenting gave at priam's prayer to hector's corpse a grave here spartan helen lies her native shore to bid proud troy majestic stand no more there hector clasps his consort to his breast consoles her sufferings though himself oppressed and there he rushes to the embattled field for victory or death nor even in death to yield the ilium prostrate feels the argive ire her heroes perished and her towers on fire and here old priam breathes his last drawn sigh and feels tis least of all his griefs to die there his loved sire divine aeneas bears and leaves his own with all a patriot's tears while in one hand he holds his weeping boy and looks his last on lost unhappy troy the warrior seized the reins the impatient steeds foam at the mouth and spring where glory leads the gates the heroes pass the athenian dames bend from their towers and bid them save from flames their walls their infant airs and fill the skies with shouts entreaties prayers and plaintive cries echo repeats their words the sounds impart new vigour to each greek's aspiring heart forward with shouts they press and hastening on try the bold lance and dream of marathon meanwhile the persians on the embattled plain prepare for combat and the greeks disdain twice twenty sable bulls they daily pay unequalled 
homage to the god of day such worthy gifts the wealthy warriors bring and such the offerings of the persian king while the red wine around his altars flowed they beg protection from the flaming god but the bright patron of the trojan war accepts their offerings but rejects their prayer the power of love alone dares rigid fate to vent on greece her vengeance and her hate not love for persia prompts the vengeful dame but hate for athens and the grecian name in phoebus name the fraudful queen receives the hecatombs and happy omens gives and now the heralds with one voice repeat the will of datus echoing through the fleet to counsel to convene the persian train that athens chiefs should brave their might in vain the chiefs and hippias self his will obey and seek the camp the heralds lead the way there on the couch their leader datus sate in ease luxurious and in kingly state around his brow pride deep and scornful played a purple robe his slothful limbs arrayed which over his form its silken draperies fold majestic sweeps the ground and glows with gold while artaphernes resting at his side surveys the advancing train with conscious pride the elder leader mighty datus then assembled princes great and valiant men and thou thrice glorious hippias loved by heaven to whom as to thy sire is athens given behold the grecian banners float afar shouting they hail us and provoke the war then mighty chiefs and princes be it yours to warm and fire the bosoms of our powers that when the morn has spread the saffron light the greeks may own and dread darius might for know o chiefs when once proud athens falls when persian flames shall reach her haughty walls from her depression wealth to you shall spring and honour fame and glory to your king he said his words the prince's breasts inspire silent they bend and with respect retire and now the greeks in able marches gain by aulus fired the marathonian plain before their eyes the unbounded ocean rolls and all darius fleet unawed their souls they fix their banners and the tents they raise and in the sun their polished javelins blaze their leader's self within the brazen car their motions orders and prepares for war their labours over the aged hero falls the chiefs to council midst the canvas walls and then the sage how great the persian host but let them not their strength or numbers boast their slothful minds to love of fame unknown sigh not for war but for the spoil 
alone strangers to honours pure immortal light they not as heroes but as women fight grovelling as proud and cowardly as vain the greeks they fear their numbers they disdain and now athenians fired by glory rise and lift your fame unsullied to the skies your victim persia liberty your prize and now twice twenty sable bullocks bring to heap the altars of the thundering king bid twelve white heifers of gigantic breed to jove's great daughter wise minerva bleed and then in sleep employ the solemn night nor till apollo reigns provoke the fight the hero said the warlike council or they raise the lofty altars on the shore they pile in heaps the pride of all the wood they fall the first who first in beauty stood the pine that soars to heaven the sturdy oak and cedars crackle at each hero's stroke and now two altars stand of equal size and lift their forms majestic to the skies the heroes then twice twenty bullocks bring a worthy offering to the thundering king the aged leader seized the sacred knife blow followed blow out gushed the quivering life through their black hides the ruthless steel is driven the victims groan jove thunders from his heaven and then their bulks upon the pile they lay the flames rush upward and the armies pray driven by the wind the roaring fires ascend and now they hiss in air and now descend with all their sap the new-cut faggots raise their flames to heaven and crackle as they blaze and then the sage o thou of powers above the first and mightiest hear eternal jove give us that athens in her strength may rise and lift our fame and freedom to the skies this said he ceased the assembled warriors pour the sacred incense and the god adore then partial jove propitious heard their prayer thrice shook the heavens and thundered through the air with joy the greeks the favouring sign inspires and their breasts glow with all the warlike fires and now twelve heifers white as snow they lead to great minerva's sacred name to bleed they fall their bulks upon the pile are laid sprinkled with oil and quick in flame arrayed and now descending midst the darkening skies behold the goddess of the radiant eyes the ground she touched beneath the mighty load earth groaning rocks and nature hails the god within her hand her father's lightnings shone and shield that blazes near the eternal throne the greeks with fear her dauntless form surveyed and trembling bowed before the blue-eyed maid then favouring thus began the power divine while in her eyes celestial glories shine ye sons of athens loved by heaven she cries revered by men be valiant and be wise when morn awakes darius numbers dare clang your loud arms and rouse the swelling war but first 
to yon proud fleet a herald send to bid the persians yield and fight suspend for vainly to their god they suppliant call jove favours greece and aulus wills their fall she said and through the depths of air she flies mounts the blue heaven and scales the liquid skies the greeks rejoicing thank the powers above and jove's great daughter and eternal jove and now a herald to the fleet they send to bid the persians yield and war suspend through the divided troops the herald goes through athens host and through the unnumbered foes before the holy man the persian bands reverend give way and ask what greece demands he tells not all but that he chosen seeks datus their chief by order of the greeks the mission but in part the sage reveals and what his prudence prompts him he conceals then to their chief they lead him where he sate with pomp surrounded and in gorgeous state around his kingly couch his arms were spread flaming in gold by forge cyclopean made and then stern datus frowning thus began what hopes deceive thee miserable man what treacherous fate allures thee thus to stray through all our hosts what gods beguile the way thinkest thou to scape the persian steel when greece our herald crushed and banished hopes of peace but speak what will the greeks and do they dare to prove our might and tempt the unequal war or do they deign to own darius sway and yield to persia's might the embattled day to whom the athenian herald made reply the greeks disdain your terms and scorn to fly unknown to heroes and to sons of greece the shameful slavery of a persian peace defiance stern not servile gifts i bring your bonds detested and despised your king of equal size the greeks two altars raise to jove's high glory and minerva's praise the god propitious heard and from the skies descends the goddess of the azure eyes and thus began assembled greeks give ear attend my wisdom nor my glory fear when morn awakes darius numbers dare clang your loud arms and rouse the swelling war but first to yon proud fleet a herald send to bid the persians yield and war suspend for vainly to their god they suppliant call jove favours greece and aulus wills their fall the goddess spoke the athenians own her sway i seek the fleet and heaven's command obey the greeks disdain your millions in the war nor i o chief your promised vengeance fear strike but remember that the god on high who rules the heavens and thunders through the sky not unrevenged will see his herald slain nor shall thy threats his anger tempt in vain and thus the greek then datus thus replies flames black and fearful scowling from his eyes herald away and asia's vengeance fear back to your frenzied train my mandate bear that greece 
and grecian gods may threat in vain we scorn their anger and their wrath disdain for he who lights the earth and rules the skies with happy omens to our vows replies when morn uprising breathes her saffron light prepare to dare our millions in the fight thy life i give darius will to say and asia's hate hence chief no more away he said and anger filled the grecian's breast but prudent he the rising wrath suppressed indignant through the canvas tents he strode and silently invoked the thundering god fears for his country in his bosom rose as on he wandered midst unnumbered foes he strikes his swelling breast and hastens on over the wide plains of barren marathon and now he sees the grecian banners rise and well-armed warriors blaze before his eyes then thus he spoke ye grecian bands give ear ye warrior chiefs and attic heroes hear your will to asia's other prince i told all which you bade me chieftains to unfold but paulus vengeance i denounced in vain your threats he scorned and heard with proud disdain the god he boasts who lights the earth and skies with happy omens to his vows replies then when the uprising morn extends her light prepare ye greeks to dare his powers in fight he said the greeks for instant strife declare their will and arm impatient for the war then he their godlike chief as paulus sage obey my counsels and repress your rage ye greeks he cried the sacred night displays her shadowy veil and earth in gloom arrays her sable shades even persia's chiefs obey and wait the golden mandate of the day such is the will of jove and gods above and such the order of the loved of jove he said the greeks their leaders word obey they seek their tents and wait the approaching day over either host celestial somnus reigns and solemn silence lulls the embattled plains end of book three recorded by nathan at antipodean writer dot wordpress dot com book four of the battle of marathon by elizabeth barrett browning this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com The Battle of Marathon by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Book 4 And now the morn by Jove to mortals given With rosy fingers opes the gates of heaven The Persian princes and their haughty lord gird on their arms and seize the flaming sword forth forth they rush to tempt the battle's roar earth groans and shouts rebellowing shake the shore as when the storm the heavenly azure shrouds with sable night and heaps on clouds the clouds the persians rose and crowd the embattled plain and stretch their warlike millions to the main and now the athenians throng the fatal field by fame inspired and swords and bucklers wield in air sublime their floating banners rise the lances blaze the trumpets rend the skies and then miltiades athenians hear behold the persians on the field appear 
dreadful in arms remember greeks your fame rush to the war and vindicate your name forward till low in death the persians lie for freedom triumph or for freedom die he said his visage glows with heavenly light he spoke sublime and rushed into the fight and now the fury of the day began lance combats lance and man's opposed to man beneath their footsteps groans the labouring plain and shouts re-echoing bellow to the main mars rages fierce by heroes heroes die earth rocks jove thunders and the wounded cry what mighty chiefs by aristides fell what heroes perished heavenly goddess tell first thou o peleus felt his conquering hand stretched in the dust and weltering in the sand through thy bright shield the forceful weapon went thyself in arms overthrown thy corslet rent next rash atenes met an early fate and feared alas the unequal foe too late and delucas the sage and philo fell and croton sought the dreary gates of hell and Memon's self with wealth and honour crowned revered for virtue and for fame renowned he great in battle feared hero's hand groaning he fell and spurned the reeking sand but what bold chief thus rashly dares advance though not in youth he shakes the dreadful lance proudly the earth the haughty warrior trod he looked a monarch and he moved a god then on the greek with rage intrepid flew and with one blow the unwary greek overthrew that hour o chief and that eventful day had bade thee pass a shivering ghost away but paulus fearful for her favourite's life sudden upraised thee to renew the strife then aristides with fresh vigour rose shame fired his breast his soul with anger glows with all his force he rushes on the foe the warrior bending disappoints the blow and thus with rage contemptuous chieftain no hippias beloved of heaven thine eyes behold renowned for strength of arm in battle bold but tell thy race and who the man whose might dares cope with rebel athens king in fight stung to the soul o slave the greek returns while his big heart within his bosom burns perfidious prince to faith and truth unknown on athens ashes raise thy tyrant throne when grecia's chiefs and grecia's heroes fall when persia's fires invest the lofty wall when naught but slaves within her towers remain then nor till then shalt thou o hippias reign then nor till then will athens yield her fame to foul dishonour and eternal shame come on no matter what my race or name for this o prince this truth unerring know that in a greek you meet a noble foe furious he said and on the prince he sprung with all his force the meeting armour rung struggling they raged and both together fell that hour the tyrant's ghost had entered hell but partial fate prolonged the prince's breath 
Renewed the combat, and forbade the death. Meanwhile, the hosts the present war suspend. Silent they stand, and heaven's decree attend. First the bright lance majestic Hippias threw, but erringly the missile weapon flew. Then Aristides hurled thirsty dart, struck the round shield, and nearly pierced his heart but the bright arms that shone with conscious pride received the blow and turned the point aside and thus the greek whom your inquiring eyes behold o prince the athenian hero cries is aristides called the just a name by athens honoured nor unknown to fame scared at the sound and seized by sudden fright the prince starts back in mean inglorious flight and now bellona rages over the field all strive elated all disdain to yield and great themistocles in arms renowned stretched heaps of heroes on the groaning ground first by his hand fell delos self divine the last loved offspring of a noble line straight through his neck the reeking dart was driven prostrate he sinks and vainly calls to heaven next godlike thanes midst the persians just loosen and mighty cordos bit the dust and now the greek with pride imprudent dares victorious mandrocles renowned in wars the agile persian swift avoids the blow furious disarms and grasps the unequal foe the intrepid greek with godlike calm awaits his instant fall and dares the impending fates but great cynegirus his danger spies and lashed his steeds the ponderous chariot flies then from its brazen bulk he leaps to ground beneath his clanging arms the plains resound and on the persian rushes fierce and raised the clattering axe on high which threatening blazed and lopped his head out spouts the smoking gore and the huge trunk rolled bleeding on the shore and then synagirus thus persian go and boast thy victory in the shades below a headless form and tell who bade thee bleed for no a greek performed the wondrous deed but thou themistocles o hero say who bade thee rush to tempt the unequal fray but learn from this thy daring to restrain and seek less mighty foes upon the plain with secret wrath the youthful hero burned and thus impetuous to the chief returned such thoughts as these unworthy those who dare the battle's rage and tempt the toils of war heedless of death and by no fears oppressed conquest my aim i leave to heaven the rest he said and glowed with an immortal light plunged midst the foes and mingled in the fight zeno the bravest of the persian youth renowned for filial piety and truth his mother's only joy she loved to trace his father's features in his youthful face that sire in fight overwhelmed mid seas of gore slept unentombed and cared for fame no more and now as youth in opening manhood glows all his loved father in his visage rose like him regardful of his future fame resolved like him to immortalize his name at glory's call he quits his native shore and feeble parent to return no more oh what prophetic
griefs her bosom wrung when on his neck in agony she hung when on that breast she hid her sorrowing face and feared to take or shun the last embrace unhappy youth the fates decree thy doom those flowers prepared for joy shall deck thy tomb thy mother now no more shall hail thy name so high enrolled upon the lists of fame nor check the widow's tear the widow's sigh for even her son her zeno's doom to die zeno even thou for so the gods decree a parent's threshold hopes no more for thee on him the hero turned his eye severe nor on his visage saw one mark of fear their manly grace improved each separate part and joined by ties of truth the face and heart the supple javelin then the grecian tries with might gigantic and the youth defies its point impetuous at his breast he flung the brazen shield received and mocking rung then zeno seized the lance the chief defied and scoffing thus began in youthful pride go mighty greek to weaker warriors go and fear this arm and an unequal foe a mother gave the mighty arms i bear nor think with such a gift i cherish fear he hurled the lance but paulus self was there and turned the point it passed in empty air with hope renewed again the hero tries his boasted might the thirsty weapon flies in zeno's breast it sinks and drank the gore and stretched the hero vanquished on the shore gasping for utterance and life and breath for fame he sighs nor fears approaching death themistocles perceived and bending low thought of his friends and tears began to flow that washed the bleeding bosom of his foe young zeno then the grecian hero eyed rejects his offered aid and all defied breathed one disdainful sigh and turned his head and died such persians did the godlike warrior slay and bade their groaning spirits pass away epizelus the valiant and the strong thundered in fight and carried death along him not a greek in strength of arms surpassed in battle almost but in virtue last he impious man to combat dared defy the gods themselves and senate of the sky even earth and heaven and heaven's eternal sire he mocks his thunders and disdains his ire but now the retributive hour is come and rigid justice seals the boaster's doom theseus he sees within the fight revealed to him alone to all the rest concealed to punish guilt he leaves the shades below and quits the seat of never-ending woe pale as in death upon his hands he bore the infernal serpent of the dreadful shore to stay his progress should he strive to flee from tartarus far and gain the upper sky 
this dreadful sight with slippery sinews now wreathed round his form and clasped his ghastly brow with horror struck and seized with sudden awe the greek beheld nor mingled in the war withheld from combat by the force of fear he trembling thus o oh, say what god draws near but speak thy will if tis a god o oh, speak nor vent thy vengeance on a single greek vainly the suppliant said overpowered with fright and instant from his eyeballs fled the sight confused distracted to the skies he throws his frantic arms and thus bewails his woes almighty thou by whom the bolts are driven he said and cast his sightless balls to heaven restore my sight unhappy me restore my own loved offspring to behold once more so will i honour thy divine abodes and learn how dreadful the avenging gods and if but o oh, forbid you mock my prayer and cruel fate me ever cursed declare give me to yield to fame alone my life and fall immortalized in glorious strife he said the god who thunders through the air frowns on his sufferings and rejects his prayer around his form the dreadful aegis spread and darts all harmless on his wretched head condemned by fate in ceaseless pain to groan friendless in grief in agony alone now mars and death pervade on every side and heroes fall and swell the crimson tide not with less force the athenian leader shone in strife conspicuous nor to fame unknown advanced in wisdom and in honoured years he nor for life but for the battle fears borne swift as winds within the flying car now here now there directs the swelling war on every side the foaming courses guides here praises valour and there rashness chides while from his lips persuasive accents flow to inspire the athenians or unman the foe the glorious greeks rush on with daring might and shout and thunder and increase the fight nor yet inglorious do the persians shine in battles ranks they strength and valour join datus himself impels the ponderous car through broken ranks conspicuous in the war in armour sheathed and terror round him spread he whirls his chariot over heaps of dead wherever he dreadful rushes warriors fly ghosts seek their hell and chiefs and heroes die all pale with rage he ranks on ranks overthrows the blood he gasps and thunders midst his foes Cali marcus the mighty leader found in fight conspicuous bearing death around the lance wheeled instant from the persian's hand transfixed the glorious grecian in the sand fate ends the hero's life and stays his breath and clouds his eyeballs with the shade of death erect in air the cruel javelin stood pierced through his breast and drank spouting blood released from life's impending woes and care the soul 
emerges in the fields of air then crowned with laurels seeks the blest abodes of awful pluto and the stygian floods and now with joy great aristides saw again proud hippias thundering through the war and mocking thus o tyrant now await the destined blow behold thy promised fate thrice mighty king obey my javelin's call for even thy godlike self's decreed to fall he said and hurled the glittering spear on high the destined weapon hissed along the sky winged by the hero's all destroying hand it pierced the prince and stretched him on the sand then through the air the awful peals were driven and lightnings blazed along the vast of heaven the persian hosts behold their bulwark die fear chills their hearts and all their numbers fly and reached the fleet the shouting greeks pursue all asia's millions flying in their view on on they glorious rush and side by side yet red with gore they plunge into the tide for injured freedom's sake the indignant main with swelling pride receives the crimson stain the persians spread the sail nor dare delay and suppliant call upon the king of day but vainly too their gods the cowards pray some of the ships the athenian warriors stay and fire their bulks the flames destroying rise rushing they swell and mount into the skies foremost sonagyrus with might divine while midst the waves his arms majestic shine with blood-stained hand a persian ship he seized the vessel vainly strove to be released with fear the crew the godlike man beheld and pride and shame their troubled bosoms swelled they lop his limb then paulus fires his frame with scorn of death and hope of future fame then with the hand remaining seized the prize a glorious spirit kindling in his eyes again the persians wield the unmanly blow and wreak their vengeance on a single foe the fainting greek by loss of blood oppressed still feels the patriot rise within his breast within his teeth the shattered ship he held nor in his soul one wish for life rebelled but strength decaying fate suppressed his breath and over his brows expand the dews of death the elysium fames his generous spirit trod he lived a hero and he died a god by vengeance fired the grecians from the deep with rage and shouting scale the lofty ship then in the briny bosom of the main they hurl in heaps the living and the slain through the wide shores resound triumphant cries fill all the seas and thunder through the skies end of book four end of the battle of marathon by elizabeth barrett browning recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com